In this video, we are not going to look at strings. <laughs> I've said that at the end of the last two videos, we'd be going on to strings, and I've been wrong both times. We're going to look at an example of using some of the math class and random numbers to make a game. So let's take a look at our game. Let's, let's play it first. So I have this game. It's called Pig. Okay. And the object is to be the first player to get to a score of 50. The players will take turns rolling the die. You can roll the die as many times as you want, but the minute you roll a one, you're done. Okay. When a player rolls a one, or the player can choose to turn the play over to the other person, uh, at that point, uh, if you roll a one, your score goes to zero and the other person gets to go. If you roll any other number and decide to roll it over to the other person, you get to keep your score and it's their turn to roll and they get to roll as many times as they want. So basically you're gambling the whole time on whether or not you roll a one. If you hold the points earned during your turn uh, are added to your total, the first player to 50 wins. So let's do this. We have Joe and Bob are going to play pig. Okay, and we're going to start a new game. So there's a new game button, and we have a score for Joe and a score for Bob. So it's Joe's turn. So say Joe decides to roll. Roll, he got a five. Notice his score didn't increase yet because he doesn't actually get the points. Uh, Joe doesn't get the points until he turns it over to Joe, uh, until, until he turns it over to Bob. So. Let's keep Joe's turn is going to continue. We'll roll again. He got a two. His score is up to seven. I'll go ahead and say hold for Joe here. Okay. Now it's Bob's turn, and Joe got the seven points he had earned. Okay. So Bob's going to roll. Bob got a three. His total is up to three. Roll again. He got a five. His total is up to eight. Living on the edge, Bob decides to roll again, and he got a one and his total went to zero, and notice it is now Joe's turn again. All right, so Joe's going to go ahead and roll. He got a four. He's going to roll one more time. Got a two, so his total is now up to six. He's going to go ahead and hold. That gets added to his total score up here. Bob's turn. Roll, roll, roll. He's up to 14. He's going to go ahead and hold it. Now it's back to Joe's turn. Joe got a six, he got a nine, he got a two, and he's up to 11. Three, he's up to 14. Four, he's up to 18. Oh, his score just went to zero, and it's Bob's turn. Notice he kept the 13 that he had before he started the turn. Okay, so you get an idea how it works. Oh, Bob got 16, he's gonna hold there. And we continue on until one of the people get to 30. So let's take a look at how this application works. All right, so we have an index file that basically has our fields, uh, the apostrophe S for whoever's turn it is. Uh, there's a span called current for that. Uh, we have a couple buttons, the hold and roll button. Uh, we have a label for die that's disabled and a label for total that's disabled when we start. We forgot the players. We got the player fields here too. Um, we have our legend up here that has our rules uh, that we saw up here. All right. We have a little bit of CSS here. We have a like a whoever's turn it is. That's what gives them the red. Um, nothing of real consequence in here. Uh, just formatting so let's look at our javascript and right here off the bat we see some familiar code um, try to expand it out here um, get random number function which we saw in a previous video so get random number function takes in a value as its maximum um, whatever number we pass in there uh, we check to make sure it's not that it is a number of some kind of some kind uh, we create a random number we multiply by that max value we take the floor of the max value 
and we add one to it. We discussed that in the previous video. So we're familiar with this function for getting our random numbers. Okay. So if we pass a six into this, it's going to give us a random number between one and six. And since we're rolling a die, we'll see that later. We have a change player function, which looks at the current player's text. Uh, and if it's player one, we change it to player two. If it's player two, we change it to player one. So that's what the change player function does. Here's our document ready function. Okay. And remember, if we go back here and look, we're using jQuery. So this code is a little bit shorter and easier to read than if we were using pure JavaScript. Okay. So we're, that's why we have document.ready here, nice and short. Uh, if somebody clicks the new game button, it sets everybody's scores back to zero. It checks to make sure that player one and player two both have names in their boxes. Otherwise, uh, it announces if, if they don't, tells us, hey, we have to have two people in there. And then if we do have two people, it gets rid of the hide class. If we go over our CSS, uh, we have a hide class, which uh, hides some things when we first start the game. So if we look at our game and let's just start it over, you notice all those buttons have disappeared because they have the hide class applied to them until we stick in Joe and Bob and say new game, then they appear. All right, we have our roll button. So we got to roll that click here. Uh, let total equal parse int uh, the total value. Okay, and then we call that get random number function. Okay. So our get random number function, we pass it a six if it comes back a one. So we stored whatever that returns in die. If if it comes back a one, we set our total to zero. Uh, and then we change the player. If it comes back anything besides a one, we add that uh, die amount to our total. Okay. And then we update, so this all happened in memory. Right here, we update the die field with the value of the die and the total field with the new value of the total. So that's what happens when somebody rolls. When somebody clicks hold, uh, let the score equal zero, uh, we take that total that the person had earned, stored in this value called total, so we have to get it back off the form. We're using, we're using the form as a place to store some things. So we pull it off the form and store that in total. Um, if the current value, uh, if, we are, if the current player is value, uh, player one, our score is going to equal score one. Otherwise, our score is going to be score two. Okay. Then uh, we're going to parse the score's value, add in the total because that they they chose to turn it over to the other player. So they take the total that was in their total box, add it to that score. Um, if the score is over fifty at that point, we can say that that current player won. Otherwise. Uh, we change player and that comes back up here and uses the change player function which we saw previously up here okay so this is a good example of writing a function this it's called by multiple other functions this change player function um, it's called here it's called here um, and it's called when we click it it takes the process of adding the scores to the place they need to be and switching the user's name and saying who's up. Okay. And then finally, we tell what, what text, uh, we have to tell them what total, the total has to be up to 50. So we're setting that value here. Um, and we're starting with player one. Okay. So this updates the text for the winning total, which Um, 
is right here. And that's how, the, that's how it works. So it makes use of this random number generation out of the math class. It makes use of function, excuse me, out of the math object. Uh, in other languages, it would be the math class. Uh, it makes use of the random function. It makes use of the floor function. Uh, it makes use of the is not a number from the global functions uh, for a neat little game.